This is a short segment on the topic of chi-square. Now the term chi-square means two different but related things and we're going to define them both here. I want you to remember from previous segments that a t-value by definition is a deviate from the normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Now the first definition of chi-square is that it's a statistic in the sense that we could use it later as a p-value test statistic. It's a number that we can get from a set of data. And in this case, if the data is a list of values x sub i, and each x sub i is drawn from its own normal distribution with mean mu sub i and standard deviation sigma sub i, then chi-squared is defined as the sum of the squares of the individual t-values. In other words, an individual t-value is the value of x minus its mean divided by its standard deviation, and then we simply sum as many of these as there are x's, for example, n of them. The second meaning of the term chi-square we've seen before, it's simply the name of a standard univariate, that is one-dimensional probability distribution. And we say a value, chi-square, is drawn from the distribution chi-square, which has a parameter nu greater than zero, if that value has this probability density. And you can see that this is a density that starts off at zero, that rises as some power law in the value chi-square, and that eventually then falls off as some exponential in the value chi-square. And it's a special case of the gamma distribution. Now the reason that we use the name, the word, chi-squared for both of these concepts is because they are related, and the theorem is that chi-squared the statistic is in fact distributed as chi-square the probability distribution. So let's prove that theorem. I'm going to prove it first in the seemingly trivial case where nu is equal to 1. That is to say, what is the probability distribution of a single t-value squared? So we'll start with a value x that's drawn from normal, zero mean, standard deviation, one, and it of course has this distribution. And now let's construct a new random variable y as being just the square of x. And since this distribution has standard deviation one and mean zero, y is a t-value squared. So what's y's probability distribution? Well, we have to transform probabilities according to the usual law. Now, the usual law would say that the probability of y dy is the same as the probability of x dx for corresponding little intervals dy and dx. But because we're squaring x to get y here, we have this funny situation. y is a parabola in x, and so a given little region of y here, the pink band, actually correspond to two little regions dx of x here, plus and minus. And to get the probabilities right, we have to include both the plus and minus. And that's the reason that there's an unusual factor 2 here in this law. So if I divide this equation by dy, you'll see that I need to get an expression for dx dy, and here over in the margin I've worked out for a parabola y equals x squared, so x equals square root of y, so dx dy is a half y to the minus a half. Now I put that in down here and get that the probability distribution of the random variable y is y to the minus a half, that came from here. Notice that the 2 here cancels the half here, and then I get the probability distribution of x, and so that comes in here, but I want it as a function not of x, but of y, and that therefore is y to the 1 half here. Well, now if I go back up here to what the definition of p sub x was, and substitute in, I get this distribution of y. 
And lo and behold, if you go back a slide and look at the form of the chi-square distribution and put in nu equals 1, you'll find that this exponential is exactly the special case chi-squared equals 1. So I've proved the theorem in the case nu equals 1. The distribution of a single t-value squared is chi-square of 1. But now I have to prove the theorem for the general integer case nu. And the easiest way to do this is to compute the characteristic function of the chi-square distribution. So let's do that. Here we have the same chi-square distribution again. And I'm going to compute its characteristic function in Mathematica. So let's see, how do I do it? First I write down the expression for the chi-square distribution. You can see that this is exactly this, and I'm just using the letter y to be the symbol chi-squared. And whenever I type a distribution into Mathematica, I always check that I've typed it incorrectly. And one check is to integrate it from 0 to infinity and see if the value comes out 1. Yep, it does. That's the area under the curve of the chi-square distribution. Now what I really care about is the characteristic function, which is the integral of the distribution function times e to the i t y. In other words, it's the Fourier transform integrating from 0 to infinity. And that gives this interesting expression. And the important thing about this is the occurrence of nu in the exponent here. Now we already proved that for nu equals 1, this is the sum of a single t-value squared. So if we're going to sum many t-value squareds, we're going to multiply their characteristic functions. And so if we sum nu of them, we'll, multiplying those characteristic functions, get a, a factor nu, I should say an exponent nu, in the product of those individual characteristic functions. But we already got exactly that as the characteristic function of the general chi-square of nu distribution, and that proves the theorem in the general case. What's the generalization of this formula to the case where the individual xi's are not independently drawn from normal distributions, but all come together from some multivariate normal distribution? In other words, there's a vector x with components xi, and that vector x is drawn from a multivariate normal. Well, you've seen things like this before when we discussed multivariate normals, and it probably shouldn't surprise you that the answer is that chi-squared is now this quadratic form. You take the vector of x's and subtract their vector mean, that's the analog of the numerator here. You take another copy of it over here, and that's the analog of squaring it here. And in the middle, instead of this 1 over sigma i squared, you have the covariance matrix here, the sigmas of the multivariate normal distribution. And this holds when x is drawn from a multivariate normal distribution with mean mu and covariance sigma. So I've just asserted this, but let's prove it. It's actually pretty easy to prove. It's one of these Cholesky things like we've seen in a couple of previous segments. We're given the covariance matrix sigma, so we Cholesky decompose it into a product of L times L transpose, as usual. And we define a variable y by the relationship L times y is equal to x minus mu. Now, just as we did before in a previous segment, we can show that y has a probability distribution, which is the product of independent normal distributions, each with 0 mean and variance 1. And then you'll see that chi-squared, which has been defined up here, is just after the decomposition equal to y transpose times y. You can sort of see that lurking here, because when I divide this sigma inverse into an L inverse and an L transpose inverse, then one of those L's will go together with this term on the left, and the other of those L's will go together with this term on the y. 
But y transpose y is something that we know how to compute because the y's are independent normal deviates and it's in particular just the sum of the components y sub i squared and that's the sum of independent t squared values and therefore it has the chi-square distribution.